everybody, Greg Kazilla here for FroNosePhoto.com and I am going over Lightroom exporting today. Now make sure you stick around at the end of this video. I will uh, tell you exactly how I made this image and how I captured this photo of my nephew Alex from back in 2006 I shot this. Uh, wow, this is a four year old photo. Amazing that uh, little guy's growing up that quickly. Anyway, we're going to go over exporting today. A uh, little explanation about exporting. Um, you, when you, all of your adjustments, all of your changes, all of your everything in Lightroom uh, is done on uh, just kind of a temporary basis. Uh, you're not actually changing any of your raw files when you edit and develop module. Uh, you're not going to be, you know, editing them at all. Uh, you won't get the actual version exported. You won't be able to see any of those changes uh, until you export the that file into another copy, into a JPEG, into a TIFF, into a PSD, something like that. It's just the way it is and the way it works. And it's great because you never really want to change your original negative. So that's always the goal. Uh, when we go to export, we can use this export button down here, or we can also go to file and export up here. Now, uh, at another time, I'll go over these published services that are still over here. It's still exporting, but uh, in Lightroom 3.2, we have some new ones from Facebook, some Smug Mug, but I have some other ones, so I'm going to do a dedicated video on that at another time. Uh, I'll go over the majority of these for you. Uh, number one, export to hard drive. Uh, export to, uh, if you have multiple scripts that are set up and plugins within Lightroom, you can use those scripts in order to, uh, you know, publish in different ways. Uh, I don't really use these couple plugins anymore, but uh, they're still there. Uh, this is a list of all my presets. You can add them and remove them just like you can in any other part of Lightroom. Next thing, export location. You can choose your folder. Uh, you can choose your folder later. Then after you hit the export, it'll actually ask you some preset folders and then same photo as original. I'm sorry, same folder as original. Now, if you choose that, then you get this option right here that says Add to Stack. And usually that comes up. I don't know why it's not working now. Let's see. Can we make it work? Subfolder. Nope, it's not working. Uh, anyway, usually you can make that work. If, if, if you're exporting a different type of file, maybe that's what it is. Nope, I don't know what's wrong. I'm doing something wrong here today. Anyway, uh, you should be, if you was in the same folder and, oh, that's what it is, add a catalog. Yeah, then it would stack it automatically for you. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go back to this setup. And so we have this put in subfolder, choose your folder, hit this drop down and give you a list. Or you can choose, hit your choose button and choose another place to get them from. Uh, if you want to rename, you can automatically rename, just like the other dialog boxes everywhere else. Now, file sizes and settings. Uh, when you're exporting for the web, uh, or when you're sending a picture to uh, whatever company it is that, that prints your pictures, uh, mpix.com or PE Photo that I both use, there's a bunch of other companies out there, uh, you want to send them JPEG, and you want to send it to them in sRGB. Uh, there are a bunch of different file formats that you can export it in, as well as set your quality here. If you want lim to limit your file size, you can do that. And I'll go over the video feature some other time inside of Lightroom. Uh, your color space options. If you're exporting a file to Photoshop and you're going to be editing it in a PSD type of document, you definitely want to choose ProPhoto RGB as long as you're working from an original RAW file. Uh, that'll give you the best quality, the best everything, and the most data to work from. Since Photoshop in general, and photo editing in general, is a destructive process, it removes data. So the more data you start with, the more you end up with. Uh, that's why we shoot raw. The more we start with, the more we end up with, and the better the picture is in the long run. So, exporting for the web, exporting for print, sRGB is your choice. Now, next one, image sizing. Uh, width and height, most of the time you're going to want to constrain the size of the picture within a certain size. When I'm exporting for the web, 600 is usually a si the size that I go with. But as you see, I have another one here that I'll export that I use a thousand pixels that I use for Flickr 
and other sites like that. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. Depends on what I'm doing. Uh, most of the time for a client though, 600 pixels is a good size for me. Uh, you can choose that. You can choose different ways of, of calculating that resizing that's there. Uh, different measurements and of course setting your your resolution with your resolution you usually want to use 240 when you are exporting for print for example here's one of my set my uh, presets for when I'm exporting file for print and you see it's set here for 240 that's the optimal resolution uh, I'm not gonna go into the technical stuff on that right now but that's optimal as far as raw files and cameras and uh, sensors and all that good stuff. Again, I'll go over that some other time. Output sharpening. Very, very important. You should always have this checked. You should always be using it. Um, you can choose the type of output that you're using it for. So if this is going to be on the web, that means it mean you choose screen. If it's going to be matte paper or glossy paper, uh, I've always used the matte paper. I never really liked the glossy paper version of that. I think it would probably be a little bit better if I did pr my own printing which I do not do. I always export uh, my photos and then send them to a lab to be printed. Uh, I don't have a you know an Epson printer or anything like that in-house. So I, I send everything out. So I always use the matte paper if I'm sending it out to be uh, printed, you know, big picture stuff like that. Or if it's going on the web, uh, I'll just use screen. And usually the standard is good if it's a product photo or something like that, not a portrait or a wedding photo, uh, then I'll choose high. But usually a portrait is going to be standard. Uh, some other time I'll go through our metadata and keywords, all that good stuff. So let's hold off on that too. Uh, watermarking. I think I've gone over this in the past. You can edit your watermarks very easily. Uh, you can reposition them. You can add text or graphics. These are pretty much self-explanatory. I don't think I really need to go over that again. Again, I've done that in a, in a previous video. Uh, this right here, the GPS Shadow GPS Injector by Jeffrey Friedel. Uh, great little plug-in, works really well. Uh, this allows me to add GPS data if my Nikon GP1 for some reason didn't add that data in or may have missed or something like that. Or maybe I forgot to put the GP1 on, which has happened before. Uh, then that I can add that data later and then it shows up in my Flickr map, all that good stuff later on. Uh, last thing, post-processing. If I want to open another application, if I want to show an explorer, I like to use show an explorer all the time because when I export, I like to pop up. So that makes it really easy. Now, post-processing actions. Again, this is another plugin that I have, and this is how you add plugins to your uh, presets and to your exports. You just click one of these, and then you hit insert, and it'll show up, and it'll give you a bunch more options. Again, something else I need to hold off on for another video. So, I'm going to choose this preset, and I'm going to hit export. And it's going to export my picture. Hold on a second. There it is. My exported picture. Now, you'll notice this path right here. I export everything into this temp Lightroom export folder. The reason for that is it's kind of like my lab. You go and pick up all of your pictures at the lab, uh, you know, web back when you shot film. Well, that's what I do. That's where I export everything to because it is a temporary temp. It's a temporary place for me to keep stuff. It's not It's not a permanent space that where I need to keep all those exported pictures. You would never go back to a 4x6 print to have another print made if you had the negative sitting right next to it and access to that negative you'd always use a negative to reprint so there's no reason for me to uh, to reuse these so if I upload them to the web I delete them uh, you know on a website or, or a photo gallery Flickr or stuff like that if I'm sending it out to uh, whatever lab to be printed once again once the upload is finished and they're not needed anymore they're deleted uh, we can see that this uh, photo actually right here 600 by 480 this is width and height and that's always how that's calculated you can see my rating stars out of uh, Photoshop are showing or I'm sorry out of Lightroom are showing up uh, right here in uh, Windows 7 if I wanted to add a title I could do that although I should have done that in um, in Lightroom but again I'll go over all that metadata and stuff another time 
All right, so there's my picture. There it is right there with my watermark, and we're all done. Size is 600 pixels, and it's ready for upload. Now, I promise you that I'll tell you how I made this photo. Uh, quite a few years ago in the studio, we have a, a psych wall, and when I had shot this, I set up the camera, and the whole the, the camera was sitting there with a wide lens on, and I just let him run around. He had just gotten his tricycle not that long ago. I think it was uh, you know a little after Christmas when we shot this photo. So he had probably just gotten his tricycle for Christmas, and he was riding it. And he was riding up and down the psych wall like a little kid does. You know he's only gone maybe a foot up the psych wall. Not like he was doing anything crazy, but you know what? He enjoyed the heck out of it, and absolutely loved it. So I just kind of let him wander around, and then all of a sudden, oops. All of a sudden, he goes back and says, Uncle Greg, what's that up there? What's that? And, uh, you know, it's the softbox above his head. Uh, so, again, that's one big softbox. It's a four-foot by, I think, I think it's a three-foot by four-foot softbox. It was on a boom above his head uh, with a single strobe above his head monolight. And the thing I love about this photo is the light on the mask of his face. Now, the mask of his face is his chin and his cheeks and his nose and his forehead and his eyes and everything his lips you know that's the mask of the face that's the the most important part of the face the most important part of a portrait uh, because that's what as humans we connect with um, so that's why I love this picture there's another one that I'll probably post to uh, to the to the, uh, to the article that shows you the other photo that I have in the series that I absolutely love where he has this awesome look on his face but the lighting isn't quite as good uh, he's looking right at the camera it still has a really innocent you know little kid look on his face but just something about this and the light on the mask of his face and everything and the you know the innocence of a little kid uh, just really really works for me and I just love the photo so anyway Greg Cazillo for Fro knows photo Dot com, and now you know how to export your pictures out of Lightroom.